<laughs> but I know that they didn't really win out in the end. So let's talk about some of the controversial social media posts because I think it's good for you to be able to explain exactly what you meant by this yeah. stuff since people have deliberately misinterpreted nearly everything. Yeah. So they, there, were, there, there are a few of them. Uh, there was the one right after the election in which you essentially said something that I think virtually all conservatives believe, which is if you want to stop voter fraud, you need a voter ID. We need to tighten up the voter procedures. For some reason, people found this very controversial. Right. So that, that one seems fairly self-explanatory to me. Yeah, well, it was my, this is not something I say with pride, but it was my first time voting. I have never voted before. Um, and I know I'm late to the game here, but I just, I never really thought that it counted. And I really... I just, politicians had never really turned me on. And so I don't pay attention to things that don't really turn me on. Um, I pay my, my taxes and I pay a lot of taxes. And so I just figure, okay, I'm doing my duty and I'm just going to keep on fighting. What I've been trying to do is just get my career going and keep on like plugging through to where I can get, you know, this bigger opportunity. The mail-in thing, we got an extra mail-in. Everybody I talked to got an extra mail-in ballot. And so I'm like, okay, so this is my first time voting. I'm going to go in and I'm going to take this and I'm going to like, I'm going to do my part so that way I can actually talk about it because everybody says, you know, you can't talk about it unless you vote. And so I agreed with them. So I never talked about it. And then when I went in, to, I was ready with my ID, you know, and I've got the, and they just asked my name and they asked my address. And I don't even remember if there was a signature required or not. And we have masks over our face. And, and I'm ready with my ID to vote because that's what, you know. And they were like, no, no, you're fine. Just go. And I was like, what? You're not going to check this? <laughs> like, this is an important thing that I'm trying to do right now. I'm actually, like, I want this to count. And so that was very um, confusing for me. And so when, when the election, you know, happened and everything was, I, I was just like, wait, why? Like, I feel like there's a lot of outrage about this. And I don't, I, like, this is confusing to me as a newcomer into this. And so I just, um, I just thought, well, the experience I went through is like, there was no ID. There was no cameras. It was on the beach, actually. <laughs> it was like in this little like, hut on the beach. Um, and it was very, um, you know, I just, I thought that this could be a positive thing. And we should probably jump on this now if this would ever be a future, you know, you know, because people in 2016 were talking about it. So it's not something that nobody was ever talking about. And so I was like, well, let's get to the point as a, a nation where we don't have to really question this anymore. Because I think that's a really dangerous thing. And I wanted this all to end. And I wanted it to be like, okay, this is your new president or this is the, the remaining president and, and let's get past it and like join and go. And it didn't stop at, you know, <laughs> it didn't stop from there. And I wanted everything to stop from there. And so that's why I put out that post. So as I say, that one was, to my eyes, very uncontroversial. Then you put up one that, again, was fairly commonplace thought in conservative circles. You, you put up a, a meme about taking the mask off your eyes so you can see what's really going on. Right, yeah. And the way I interpreted that, and virtually every other conservative I know, was all you were saying is that a lot of the stuff that's been presented about COVID has been exaggerated or not based on science or based on politics. And just think, bouncing around. It's just been bouncing back and forth. And um, it's like, like uh, masks are bad. Okay, now masks are good. And now, you know, it's just been like all over the place. So since the, I mean, we're sitting there like, wait, what is going on, you know, just confusion. Um, so with that one, though, um, I live in California and I, I've seen the hypocrisy that's been happening, you know, like, you know, they're going to the French Laundry and they don't have masks on. And um, there's just been so much hypocrisy and they have those like little edited videos where you can see the, the, the Democrat leaders just like completely the hypocrite. Like, it was like, we, I just always laugh. I'm like, this is like, like hypocrisy 2020. And so, um, so I just like put that out because I thought that was like a good way to convey that we need to start paying attention to the hypocrisy. So it, for me, it was just like, like open your eyes. So those two, again, were really, uh, for, to my eyes, for conservatives particularly, very uncontroversial. Then we got to the one that, uh, that they decided was worthwhile getting rid of you over. We'll get to the social media post that had to do with the Holocaust in just one second. First, let's talk about your sleep quality. You may have noticed that sometimes I look super tired because I have three children. Let's talk about the social media post that brought the world down around your ears. This is a social media post in which essentially you were making the argument that 
bad things, the, the way you treat your neighbor can slide over into actual oppression of your neighbor. So there's a picture of a woman, uh, a Jewish woman in the Holocaust running away from Germans. And the caption essentially made the argument that Nazis didn't start by killing people and common Germans didn't start by going along with the Holocaust. This all started by people dehumanizing people who live next door to them. Mm -hmm. And the reaction to this was that somehow you were attempting to downplay the Holocaust or that you were comparing Republicans to Holocaust victims mm -hmm. or something like that. I wanted to give you a chance to sort of explain what you were thinking and what you meant by that. I am so inspired by like the gentle spirit of the Jewish people <laughs> going through that time. And, you know, like you watch like the, you watch, I think I watched this, this older Holocaust survivor, um, her court case, and she was, she, they, they found this old uh, Nazi man and he was old and he, they like rolled him in on a stretcher and like they, you know, really played this up and she, she forgave him. <laughs> she forgave him in court after putting her through what he did and she faced him. And, I, and I'm always so inspired by these stories. Um, and I always wondered, like, how, how did that happen? You know what I mean? So when I posted that, you know, it wasn't something that I felt like was um, controversial. Uh, it was something that I thought, well, maybe all of us need to ask ourselves how that happened. Because, um, you know, it's important. The Post never said anything about Republicans or conservatives. It doesn't say anything about that in there. It's, it was more about, like, you know, people tearing each other apart. And um, I thought it would be more of a thing where you, you know, bring people together. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is like, you know, bring people together. But now after hearing so much, you know, um, and I'm actually grown through the experience of just knowing that, you know, that's, <laughs> it's not fair to the Jewish community to, to, you know, just throw this out here so much, you know, like when you say the word Nazi and when you call someone a Nazi, um, and, and, you know, you, you need to have a little bit more respect on it. And so like, I understand that, but, um, it was no way of my intention. You know, I've got every single big publication saying she's comparing conservatives and Republicans to this. And um, that's not really what I was doing. I was, I was saying we as a people, because I still am very fresh to this political, you know, spectrum. I mean, I have love for everyone. I'm not a, a hateful person. In fact, I go out of my way, and I have gone out of my way my entire life not to be a hateful person. I mean, yeah, I've, I've fought in the ring, and I do have hot blood. Um, but it's usually hot blood when it deals with people being bullied. And when I saw people being bullied that were silenced and scared to speak, <laughs> I'm not, a, I don't want to speak. I want to create art, you know. Um, but I have a big problem with bullies and I have a big problem with, you know, a, I don't have a problem with power. I have a huge problem with abuse of power. Well, I mean, it was, it was fair, it, and look, it was obvious to everybody, and I, I said this to you when we first spoke, that it was obvious that this had nothing to do with anti-Semitism. The Post obviously was not anti-Semitic. You'd have to completely twist the Post backwards in order to get to the idea that it was anti-Semitic, since it was specifically decrying the, tr the, treatment of, the treatment of Jews. It was saying, what happened to Jews was evil, and this should never happen again, and that's why you should be careful about how you treat your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Jewish community is, I think, properly very sensitive about Holocaust comparisons, and so... Uh, you know, I myself on my show said that we have to be careful about when we invoke the Holocaust. But here's the thing. Disney Plus and Lucasfilm don't care how you invoke the Holocaust if you happen to be of a different political persuasion. No. And I pointed out on Twitter right away as soon as this broke that Pedro Pascal, who was your co-star in The Mandalorian, the lead in that show, that, that Pedro Pascal had put out a Holocaust meme in 2018 in which he not only got it, the facts wrong, he actually posted a picture from not the American border in 2018 and called it America 2018. He then compared the treatment of migrant children in 2018 to victims of the Holocaust in 1941, which is absolutely absurd on every level. And of course, Disney Plus and Lucasfilm had no problem with that whatsoever. They never said anything about it. They never responded to the comparison. They never said that it was, it was anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic to, to make that comparison in any way. There was pretty obviously a double standard at play here. Oh, and there has been. I mean, they've been all over me and they've been watching me like a hawk. And I'm, I'm watching, you know, other people on the same production, you know, and they can say everything they want. 
And um, and that's where I had a, a problem. I had a problem because I didn't want to, I wasn't going along with the narrative. Um, and, and I, you know what? <laughs> I adore Pedro. I adore him. I know he said and done some hopeful things. I don't think that posting anybody's number on social media is okay. But I know that, you know, he thinks a lot of the stuff that I post, you know, like, but there's so much love there still, you know? Um, and we had agreement <laughs> after we realized we were a little bit politically different. Um, we had an agreement that first and foremost, you're a human being and you're my friend first. Um, and, you know, the two sides, uh, you know, we're trying to like drag us apart because we're both passionate and, you know, and I, that's what's been really crazy is like you see these people over here being so passionate. You see people over here being so passionate. And I, I love that we're, we're just both passionate, you know. Um, and we just, we think, we think a little bit differently, I think, through our different experiences. So I, I know that, you know, I know that we both have misstepped on our tweets, you know. Um, we're not perfect. We're human beings. Um, but he, he's not a bad human being. He's a, he's a sweet person. Well, I, I don't think anybody thinks that any, any different. I think that the, the disparate treatment is the part that was kind of shocking. Yeah. It was like one, one meme that invoked the Holocaust to say we shouldn't treat each other badly is fireable. And the other meme that compares Americans, uh, Americans you know, trying to deal with a, a problem of migrant children at the border to the Holocaust, that, that is perfectly acceptable to Disney Plus and Lucasfilm. Yeah. And, and then you saw the backfilled sort of post-facto explanation because it became very clear to even a lot of members of sort of the traditional liberal camp that what had just happened to you was wrong. You had people like Jonathan Chait, who is a traditional liberal, saying that this is like McCarthyism. Uh, you had people who are traditionally liberal saying that this is it's a mistake, that you're, you, the, the censorship of a particular point of view, and that it was pretty obvious that you were being silenced and, and canceled because you were conservative. And so at that point, you saw the left swing into action and start resurfacing old media posts and then declaring those anti-Semitic. Yeah. So this is when they resurfaced a December 2020 post that was a meme of essentially uh, a bunch of old men, no distinguishing anti-Semitic features, which we'll discuss in a second, mm. uh, sitting over a Monopoly board. And the meme said something like, and the Monopoly board is sitting on the backs of people who appear to be slaves. And the meme says something like, if they stand up, then they, if, if we all stand up, the game is over. Yeah. And the implication was made that this was an anti-Semitic meme and that you had known it was an anti-Semitic meme when it was posted. So I want to give you a, a chance to explain what you were thinking when you posted that meme. Because the, just for those who don't know, the history of the meme itself, mm. it was a, a meme that was posted by allies of Jeremy Corbyn, essentially in Great Britain. The original meme had very Semitic featured people who's fairly obviously anti-Semitic. It had you know, characters essentially from Der Sturmer, the Nazi newspaper with the hooked noses and the beady eyes and all this. This version that you posted didn't have any of that. So mm -hmm. if you were not very deeply into politics, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to imagine that you would even make that connection. Right. And so, so usually I like to post, um, I like to post think pieces. And um, what I found is those, those are what get me in the trouble the most because that's when everybody starts putting their opinion out there. It's like, you know, like the last posted, they were like, Oh, look at look at what she said. And I was like, um, why don't you guys do your homework a little better? Like, it doesn't say Republican and conservative in that post, you know? Um, and so when people started saying that that, um, the game where if everybody would just stand up, I thought that, oh, once again, <laughs> I thought that was something that we could all join in on. Um, and I had no idea, obviously no idea, that, uh, that the original one had been, um, like, I didn't know who those men were. But then I saw what they were saying, and then I saw the post, and I saw the picture, and they were two different pictures. And so I really didn't know. I'm like, okay, so, uh, so do I take that down? Like, do I take that down when it's not the same picture, um, but the origins were? Because the idea in itself is that if we all join together, once again, like my other one, if we all join together and stand up, if you really go through what I'm posting. I post something because I want people to think, you know, and I want to hear what people have to think. And when people, when people are calling me, uh, I've been called so much. Like, I'm, I've been called racist. I've been called transphobe. I've been called homophobe. I've been called now anti-Semitic. And I'm like, I don't take those lightly. Like, you're calling me my soul the blood that runs through me, 
you're calling me that. And I, I, I blocked so many people. I'm like, you say that once to me. Like, you're done. I don't want to talk to you ever again. I don't want to see you on my feed. That was a lot of blocking. <laughs> I really, they're like, oh, she's got a blockchain. And I'm like, no, I'm doing it. Like, I'm pissed. Like, you, you just insulted me and my, my heart and my soul. Because I, I honestly do. I, I've gone out of my way. I, and I know everybody on the set of Mandalorian or any set I've been on. My, <laughs> my actions towards other human beings have spoken for themselves. And I'm not a perfect human being. I have so much to learn, and I am going to make mistakes. But I know everybody on that set, and I know that even the people that were gunning for me, like, I know that so many people that have met me and worked with me. I know that's why we might be seeing, I go out of my way to make sure. I, I am the one that on sets people come and cry to. I'm the one that sticks up for someone if they're being... Like, hey, this is enough. This person needs out of this. Like, they can't breathe. Um, and I've always been like that. I've stuck up for, like, minorities I've, everywhere. I've gotten in fist fights, you know, for... I've been in actual fights growing up in Las Vegas because I cannot stand bullying. And so, um, yeah, I think I, you know... <laughs> I just wanted people to think... And I put up something and people were putting their own, they were putting their own perspective and spin on it. And then they put words into my mouth that I never say. And then, uh, then they start, you know, then it starts trending and all of these, you know, these big <laughs> uh, newspapers and news articles. And you're like, do you know me? Like, get to know me. Like, 